because every my whole team's like we need a scandal like that's i need a scandal i'm like but i'm not like a scandal person i'm like married i'm like i can't have like a really bad scandal so i'm like what if it is i just show up in the same dress and it's like every show and i'm 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 kind of into it (laughs) it's like it's very um just like under the radar yeah. like and you don't even just like you're like oh my god again Who knew? Like the fifth time. <laughs> yeah i don't even know how we do it but it would be pretty funny Um, I can't even remember why I was brought that up. Why did why did I bring? Because you're because it broke down on Hillsborough. Oh, on Hillsborough, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I had to get it towed and like sit there in traffic while everyone was like honking at me in rush hour. That is, yeah. What and time I was is like, it? Oh, like four in the afternoon. Oh my. God. Yeah, and I was just like, oh my god, I hate this so much. Like right in the middle, like lane. That is equivalent to like being hung by your toes in the town square. Like yeah. there's something just very like Embar- the so whole town hates you about it. Yeah, so embarrassing. There's and there's something about also. I have a car, my car right now, speaking of getting a new car, I need, need to because th- there's like the tiniest leak or something. Mm-hmm. So I have to keep filling up with coolant like every couple of months because yeah. it runs out, I guess. Um, and I can I can always tell when it's going to start to run out because I f- the AC starts to kind of not be as cold and I get this overwhelming sensation of like heat in my body. I'm also hot because there's no fucking AC. Yeah. But like this over, like I'm, I start sweating. I'm like, oh, I have to pull over and I have to deal with this in the middle of the world. Mm-hmm. There's just something about a Do car. Do you have to down. carry the coolant in your car? Yeah, but it's like I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, but I don't it's... know anything. I'm like, <laughs> like I couldn't even change a tire. Like my, my dad would oh, be either. so embarrassed if I, I just like couldn't get through the day with the if something went wrong with my car. No, so but no. this is why we have AAA. Totally. Why else? Totally. I'm here to employ the AAA yeah. yes. people of the world. Or male friends or like husbands. like <laughs> Exactly, yeah. exactly. Or friends or friends. No, I have no idea how to change a tire. The, I mean, the coolant is so easy. You just put it in. Yeah. You just pull it, put it in. Yeah. You do have to wait though because it was really scary. I was on my way somewhere and I was kind of in a hurry-ish. I didn't want to be too late, but you're supposed to wait for your car to cool down before you add coolant. This is such a boring, this is a boring <laughs> conversation. <laughs> it was so, I was like, free, I, I, it was obviously a very, um, momentous moment for me because if you take it like little cap off too soon then it can like explode and give you third degree burns oh gosh which i i can't kill the money maker you know what i mean like this skin's the largest organ i'm not trying to deal with that so (laughs) um i went to science class so you have to wait for it to cool down and i of course i'm googling like how long does it take for your car to cool down and you get 75 different answers and some guy on reddit was like Eh, just put, just put a towel over it. And I'm like, okay. You're like, I'm going to listen to the right guy. I'm going to listen to the one guy who said the answer that I wanted to hear. Yeah. And it made like a hissing noise. And I was like, nope, I'm out. It's just so overwhelming. There's just so many things. like, And you feel yeah. like such a girl. I know. As, I know. As, as whatever as that sounds, I'm like, fuck. I know. I thought it was better than this. I know. But I feel like, I don't know. They People don't really like, I mean, maybe dads do or moms or whatever. But like, I never really learned that, how to do any of that kind of stuff with no. a car i've always just like taken it in or like my dad's done it for me yeah so yeah um, but whatever i mean we get through the day we get there we get there we get there um okay so in nashville this is because you're from canada yep you're how when did you move from canada so i moved to la um in 2014 okay um and then like the end of 2015 i moved here to nashville Okay. So I kept been kind of living, um, and I had a place where uh, I would like go back and forth to Vancouver. I was living in Vancouver, like the last place in Canada, mm-hmm. um, and bounced back and forth. But then I sold that once I was like in Nashville and settled and um, loved it here. So yeah. it took a while. Like I didn't have any friends or or anything going on career wise here. So I like had to really like plant my roots before I was ready to like be like, okay, I'm never gonna go back to Canada. Oof. Yeah, that's a big jump. Yeah. I mean, it's a different country. It is. <laughs> There's, and, like, like, logistics involved. Totally. And, like, paperwork. That's, I yeah. mean, that's all been um, something I still am dealing with, like, to this day. It's, like, getting my green card and proving that I can, like, live here. Yeah. It's the only so. reason you and Jake got married. Right? It literally, <laughs> I'm not joking you. So, we've been together like for, like, <laughs> 10 years. But at the end, we were supposed to have our wedding in, like, March of 2020, which obviously didn't happen. But Oof. we decided to, like, elope faster so I could get my green card faster so he was always like 
you married me for your green card and I'm like I would have found somebody so much faster yes. like I had to date you for 10 years first yes so, so that's so much time to commit to some <laughs> no we love Jake um okay so my I guess my I want to talk about just like your childhood in Canada mm-hmm. but I'm curious like how do you have you uh, adapted to the heat here in Nashville because isn't Canada is that Mm. I feel like okay so that is like a little bit of a stereotype obviously it's Great. freezing in the winter like okay. that is a thing like New York or like the only time I've been to Canada was in the winter so it's okay. my only frame of reference okay. just for, in my defense it would be like in my opinion like just New York City in the winter like it's cold right okay. Great. so um and I will say like the one thing about Canada like where I'm from the west coast is there'll be so much snow on the ground but it's still sunny so okay. it doesn't feel as cold like you're I feel like you're not like wet cold like down to your bones where sometimes you can be here because it's sunny gotcha. Um, gotcha. but I mean of course it is cold like that's that's part of it too but in the summer like right now it, it would be like this up where my parents live it would be like 90? it's not like so oh yeah but it's not like um so humid okay um but it's hot yeah the, like I, yeah yeah. such a stereotype I know I know it's people it. people love that like they're like you must like love the cold I'm like no I'm I hate the cold, just like yeah. everybody else, even though, like, I'm around it a bit more. People who do love the cold fascinate me. I'm like, uh, who are you? <laughs> I like to sleep with it, like, icy cold. Oh, for, oh in an icebox? Yes. But that's sleeping. Yes. But in the daytime, I'm like, I could have the house at, like, 75, which people think is crazy. That sounds incredible to me. Yeah, it's, like, nice and cozy and, like, yes. I don't know. You can wear, like, like, I don't necessarily want to be, like, in a full sweatpants suit in my house. I don't want to wear a parka jacket while I'm trying to edit on my computer yes. inside my own home. I know. And that's what a boy, I have, like, fleece robes that I wear in me the too. middle of July. Me too. Because it's because because if you are outside doing things and you come, you don't want to come home to like an eighty degree home. I yeah. get that. What do you keep your house at? Like seventy two. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. I but the only reason it's not warmer is because I like to sleep at at least sixty eight, if not I like lower. Like sixty eight too. Yeah, and I feel like the jump. I don't know anything about. <laughs> this is a really exciting conversation. Isn't this like, really? <laughs> what temperature do you like to sleep at? Honestly, though, yeah. like I feel like that is for so many people like points of contention between their relationship is like what's the temperature of the house 100 percent, 100 percent, or like the temperature of like the like whether or not to get a cooling mattress or like a firm oh, should mm-hmm. we talk about mattresses and let's, really make people turn off the episode <laughs> like we're turning people on is what we're doing oh, yeah mattresses hard for me like i want yes. a hard ass mattress okay i actually don't you don't i don't know what i like so, well, I mean, I'm the only, problem. Yeah. I mean, I feel like when we get older and like have more back problems, it's probably better to have hard. Yeah. But I like hard with a pillow top. Yeah. Hard but soft. <laughs> yes. Cushy yeah, on just, the outside, hard on the inside. Yes. Okay. Yes. Say it slower. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that, uh, what's the word? Orthopedically makes sense <laughs> to have like a firm mattress. Yeah. For sure. I, I don't know. The idea of like falling into a pillow. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of love you know like I like the idea of <laughs> falling into this like dream world and but I don't actually know what's better for my body I I think they say hard but like also you can get like a really soft like duvet cover <laughs> sure, sure 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 yeah no there are so many and then loopholes. that's like your pillowy softness so many loopholes yeah there's also mattresses are so, I didn't realize how expensive a mattress was until I was like in college mm-hmm. I'm thinking they're like a hundred bucks I'm like mm-hmm. three three grand mm-hmm. for a mattress yeah Who and you get to lay money? on it like one time and you're like okay this is what we got and that's and that's why I don't think I've discovered it yet because it's yeah. like you spend however, however many thousands of dollars every couple of years and you're like I'm not gonna test it too much mm-hmm. it's, it's you know it's not oat milk versus almond milk yeah um <laughs> okay so Canada yes I didn't know this well, it's so funny because I've talked to you for 45 minutes, so I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know this. Um, you, your brother, like, did, like, what, like, Canadian Idol? Is yes. that kind of the vibe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. he, like, same kind of, well, exactly the same concept as, like, American Idol, but okay. the Canadian version. Um, so he, at the time, was, like, oh my gosh, like, 17 years old, and he did not want to do it, like, at all. And my parents were like, I think you should do this. Like, I think it would be, like, a fun thing. And this was when, like, I feel like now it's different. Like, this is when, like, American Idol and Canadian Idol were, like, massive. Like, the top streaming shows on whatever network they were on. Right. Um, so, basically, like, my parents, like, made him audition. Because they're That's like, incredible. I think this would be really cool. And they're like, you're never going to, like, win. <laughs> and um, I love the encouragement. Yeah. Do it for the plot. You're going to fall on your face. It's going to be great yes. character building. <laughs> but he, I mean, he has an amazing voice. Um, okay. And he won. It was crazy. Like, his whole life shifted so fast. And, like, all of our lives did. I mean, I grew up literally outside of a town of 
maybe a thousand people on a ranch like so small that's so small so small like my grandparents my cousins like we all lived on this ranch it was basically like this little colony <laughs> I, oh wait this you're speaking my language i yeah. want to like start a, a coven or whatever it's not a coven what's it called are you just like a like a little like commune yeah no, i want like an all-female commune and we just they have each those hair they i know those. i want my own though mckenzie y'all have one husband and you get to live together yes i love it let's um, do it sign me up but yeah so we just like it was like a very sheltered kind of like lifestyle a little bit Mm -hmm. and I mean I went to the same school my dad went to and like that school was I don't know 200 people like it was just so small and so Mm -hmm. when he won it was like he was so famous in Canada like Mm. to the point where he was selling out arenas and um we didn't know anything about the music entertainment like the entertainment industry at all like didn't know how a publishing deal worked or management worked or anything i mean, at the time i was like 12 so obviously i didn't know anything but my okay, parents nice. didn't know anything either so he signed um you know kind of a shitty contract like they all do coming I, out of those yeah. shows aren't they always yeah yeah and then um he did that for my gosh like probably five years and we kind of like went with him when we could and um and in the end he decided like his personality is just like not he doesn't like to be the center of attention. Like he loves music and he loves singing, but he didn't like Mm -hmm. the fame part of it. Mm -hmm. And he would like, couldn't walk down the street kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. So he just decided eventually that like, that wasn't his vibe. And I was like, it's my vibe. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But that's my question. Like, did you see what aspect? Cause did you, okay. First of all, did you have any aspirations of doing it yourself before he even went on the show? Yes. So okay, like so I did. was, so we grew up like in so many music lessons. That was like the one thing my parents put us in. Like I started violin and piano and guitar when I was four years old and singing Damn. and music theory and like all that kind of stuff. So they really wanted us to be in music. And I was also like acting and doing musical theater and just like a little show pony of a kid. Okay. Um. So I loved that and I loved being on stage and I loved dancing and like the whole thing and so um when I saw that and like you know when you're a kid you just don't think any of that stuff is like normal people can do it you know you're like those are famous people from LA or whatever like a little I I don't know how to do that I don't have one connection to or like a connection removed I have no connections to anybody no or or it doesn't feel like it can be a job right it's like maybe if you're walking down the street the right person sees you and like plucks you out of obscurity and puts you on a you know a ferris wheel of fame but it doesn't feel like something you can like work towards and attain and and get to either totally and like you you don't even know um some of the jobs within entertainment for sure it's just yeah so I feel like at that point I was I had like oh somebody who I obviously very close to my brother Mm -hmm. doing it where it felt like a little bit more attainable like maybe I could meet his manager and like his label and like I don't know like he had some connection so I feel like that like sparked it more um but I really went first down like the path of acting um so like at 16 booked my first tv series so i i had that going on and still wanted to do the music as well but acting kind of took off like faster mm-hmm. so. when you were 16 and acting was there mm-hmm. a part of you that was like i wish i like, what, what about the singing thing like was it in the back of your mind or or even vice versa like i'm just curious, like because you yep. do both of those things and you're yep. successful in both of those things yeah i think it was always and like once i got a little taste like that he could do it i just like knew i was gonna do that Gotcha. Um, and so I feel okay. like like I my parents have like found journals when I was like seven being like I will be an actress and a singer like that is what I'm doing and so for them so they've always just like known that's what I wanted to do there was like a brief stint that my mom's like you really need to like go to school so I took like three months of <laughs> like pre-nursing school and then I dropped out <laughs> you're like what's the mo- the minimum thing that yeah. I can do yeah, yeah, yeah and it just like I mean it just wasn't for me um and they knew that they just wanted you know every parent wants their kids to like go to school yeah Um, so yeah I don't know it's just I think it's just been really all I've ever done and then professionally all I've ever done since you know 14 basically have you had another like any sort of like works at the ice cream shop or I did yeah so I um I used to like play weddings so I obviously play the violin classical so we would play like in a quartet while people got married 
So I'd make like 50 bucks an hour, which is pretty good for like a 14, 15 year old. I mean, we'd only play for an hour, but 50 bucks. Hey. Um, And we would play while people walked down the aisle and like while they walked out. And so I had that job and I did serve for a while um, at just like a little restaurant and then that's it. Yeah, just kind of get your little customer service experience and get out. That's all you need. I actually learn a lot from serving. I feel like, have you ever served? For sure. Yeah. It's like, was it your thing? Did you enjoy it? I was, I preferred bartending. Bartending was more my thing. I liked the, just the bar being there. And I I felt like a fucking sex cat, just like slaying drinks. When I was a waitress, I was like, I'm going to drop people's food inevitably. Like this is not for me. I still remember like the, one of the first times um somebody ordered like a really fancy bottle of wine and I didn't know how to like open it or pour it or anything like that so I opened it poured it and I was doing it like too slow so it ended up like dripping down the bottle and down my arm and off my elbow <laughs> like this really fancy bottle of red wine and I was just like oh my god and <laughs> eventually I was just like I'll get you another bottle because like literally so much of it like a glass full just dripped off my whole arm no like, I just didn't know how to do it. What was what was the customers re- were they pissed? They were laughing. Were they- I mean, I was oh, like okay, good. I was like 17 years old. So okay, good. Like, they knew I didn't know and we paid for it obviously, so. Okay, good. I thought yeah. you could go either way. Like some people could be like that is my wine you're spilling or like people who are really whiny or like how dare you waste it. Yeah. So could have gone either I should have just put like the glass at the bottom. Of my yeah, wine, you, all like- you do is just maneuver it. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't want arm flavored wine? I mean, I feel like you would bring up the tannins. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, a couple elbow tannins. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, okay, so you did that. So, if you can be honest, all humility aside, not even humility, just like honest. Mm-hmm. When you and you did you go on the road with your brother? I, I never you, did. No. Okay. He was very like, um, and my parents were like, "Hey, if you want this, like, you need to do it your own way and your own self. Like, you can't like go on tour with him or sing with him or anything. Like, he's got his own career. You have to build your own." Your parents sound fascinating. They're really cool. They're definitely like, um, I mean, my parents are like some of my best friends now. Like we're so tight. Um, but they, I've never like had anything like handed to me. Although like they, they could have a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, they've always made me work. I remember like one time. So I booked my first TV series at 16 where I was like a, the, the lead of it. Mm-hmm. And I had made like quite a bit of money like 40 grand or something like that. And that was a lot for him. So much money. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad put it um, aside into like a different account. Sorry. And I moved to Vancouver, was serving. And I remember I went to go pay for gas. I only had $11 left in my account. Ooh. And that was like because I couldn't touch that money. And so I called him. I was like, hey, I need to uh, transfer some of that money of my money over to pay for like my rent and my gas and all that kind of stuff. He's like, no, you can just pick up more serving shifts and I was like that's my money how old were you probably like 18 or 19 okay and he's like no you're saving that you're gonna buy your first house with that and I was like no that's my money like I need to pay for it he didn't give it to me and I did buy my first house with it so ah, um like or like a down payment so yeah. um they were very very cool in the fact that like they really like set me up but they did not um I mean I had to work really hard I I'm kind of obsessed with that because I think I think it would be infinitely easier to give you that money Mm -hmm. as a parent because like I'm sure you hated him in that moment. Yeah. I'm sure you viscerally hated him. And it was mine. Of course. But I guess like still you're still 18. I don't know. I'm not really sure like I could probably have like been like legally that's my money. For sure. Of course course. I wouldn't do that. But it was was a good lesson for me. Like I, I picked up more shifts and I served and I you know had a really good little like nest egg for a down payment one day. Yeah. And I think, and not to get, this is not a parenting podcast, but I just find people, people who seem like successful, just like well-grounded human beings. I'm always like, what was your parenting like? Mm -hmm. And I, for him to say, you can't have your money. Mm -hmm. And for you to not fight him back on that meant that there was like a foundation that somewhere in the back of your mind, you knew that he knew what he was talking about when it comes to whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's so beautiful and wonderful yeah so yeah I that is like a model he was definitely like my parents are um very like strict in like uh when we were growing up like very like strict but still like fun like I was still able to like go out and I I mean I was like drinking at like and Canada you can drink legally at 18 so I was probably drinking at like 16 so they were like they were the type that's like if you are drinking I don't we don't want you to but like if you are call us and we'll pick you up like yeah. that's the kind of parents they were um and yeah, they just have always been like, if you want that, then work harder. And Damn. So yeah, 
Tell. And you did. And you're like, yeah. all right, yeah. fine. I guess it worked. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. And it like, I feel like I, I will always say that like, I know I'm not like the most like the best singer in the world or the best songwriter in the world or like the most talented person like in the city, obviously. But I will say that like, I can work harder than probably 99% of them. So that's like my my skill set that I bring to the table is like I could work them under the table kind of thing fuck yeah I I feel the same way about myself I'm like I feel I'm I'm very mediocre in almost every single thing that I do (laughs) but the only thing I can control is just working my ass off yeah and I like and I like that that's my I actually think I would prefer if I was some crazy talent in some capacity I might not work as hard Mm -hmm. and I like that my thing your thing is it's in our control yeah and I think that like I mean I have seen so many artists who I'm like oh my god your voice is like insane like Mm -hmm. it's like not even human but they don't have like the other piece and that is like the work ethic and I think it's more important too like I think Taylor Swift's a good example like Mm -hmm. not the best voice in the world probably and an incredible songwriter but not um, known for her voice yeah yeah but a great voice but like she's not like Beyonce or or, or Ariana Grande or any of those or yeah. uh, Mariah Carey but she can work really really hard and like the most successful artist in the world it's so crazy it's know. such a yeah it's it, that is the most um the largest model of of the work ethic is yeah. Taylor Swift yeah it's yeah. a great example yeah and I feel like it's it's been cumulative but to see this big tour is almost like she's making millions of dollars like yeah she's billions her- yeah Bi- yeah billions yeah and she's what did i say millions it doesn't yeah, matter yeah she's at making that point billions like, of who cares <laughs> i know i don't even know that i don't even know what either one of them is like so um but yeah it's it's however many years 20 years or whatever it's been of just like grinding grinding yeah but it's really nice as someone who appreciates the grind to see yeah fruition yeah it's like i think like you said it's more in your control yeah and this industry is so out of your control Oh, it's nothing but out of your control. Yeah, so, like, to have one little piece that, like, you can wake up every single day and, like, do and be consistent with is, um, I think, like, also mentally, like, really good. Yeah. You know? For sure. Okay, so real quick, I, I want to go back to my original question, which was you, your brother is insanely famous in Canada, mm-hmm. and you're seeing this. He hates it. Mm-hmm. He's grossed out by it. Mm-hmm. How, does, how does little Mackenzie feel about it? Does she want it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I still remember there was like one time that he, we were playing the show or he was playing the show and he got off stage and like for some reason it was like this back. I don't even like know what it was because I just I was so little, but I have this like vision of it. Um, This back kind of like alley thing that was like leading into like a stadium kind of like it was like an underground thing. Okay. And for some reason, like fans got in and they started chasing us. And so we were all like running and I was like, this is so awesome. Oh like these gosh. people are like really wanted to like meet him. But he was like, oh, my God, like I'm scared. Like, let's run. <laughs> and I just like, thought it was like awesome. Move aside. I got this. <laughs> yeah. I'll handle them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, I definitely, definitely wanted it. And like. You know, for I don't even know if it was for the right reasons back then. It was probably just for like the sparkle and the shine of what I thought it all was. But yes. Yeah, I guess that was my question. Like, I, I wonder why. Because I felt the same thing. Like when I would see people. For me, I, I think I thought that it meant that they were worthy and they were mm-hmm. like the most likable. Like mm-hmm. if they have so many fans, they must be really likable. Like fandom meant love Mm -hmm. which we know it doesn't necessarily but uh that's what at least I thought I was like oh that many people love you like Mm -hmm. how wonderful must that feel yeah I think that's what I thought when I was a kid and I think too like you have like the vision of like they must be so happy so like they have everything yeah like this really cool career and money and all these cool clothes and like a nice house like they have everything yeah and like that is the one thing that after being in this industry for like so long you're like oh definitely not happy it means nothing yeah well because I think it is that it's that if you think that that fandom or people who are coming to your shows or people who are watching your things or following you on the internet if you think that the more people the people that are doing that love you Mm -hmm. then how can you be sad right right but that's not the case right it's like they love the idea of you almost or mm-hmm. something so it feels almost kind of empty and um 
not nearly as exciting as as I thought. I was like, oh my gosh, Hillary Duff is just walking around on cloud nine. The fact nine. that you say Hillary Duff because we must have grown up at the same time. Yeah. I was obsessed with Hillary Duff. Would have done like, it for her. Did you go to her website? Do you watch her like vlogs and stuff? Oh, I'm sure. I can't remember a website, but I I was like anything. Hillary I Duff. would like do like dial up internet to like <laughs> download a Hillary Duff vlog. Yeah, and she was like, I mean, it was like the come clean era. Like I loved. I mean, oh. or like um. So yesterday, like all oh, of that, I like I loved her hit. so much. So good. She was so good. So good. And yeah, I had this idea. I mean, like every if she was like in a magazine, I bought the magazine. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see every photo. I wanted to see every little tangible piece of her mm-hmm. and just pretend I was her, quite frankly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I remember this is such a weird specific thing, but I remember in the movie theater going to see the Lizzie McGuire movie and there was this poster. <laughs> this is like Maybe kind of bad. So trigger warning. But I, w- I saw her and I was like kind of a chunkier kid. And I remember she was – and I always kind of liked her because she – Wasn't like ti- – like She wasn't yeah. like super, super skinny. Yeah. And I remember in the poster, she's sideways. And I was like, oh, all we have to do is be skinny sideways. <sighs> Got it. That's why I said trigger warning. <laughs> but it did – I was like, great. The only thing I have to do to be Hillary Duff slash Lizzie McGuire is be skinny sideways. Be it skinny was, sideways. Oh, my god. It gosh. was such a visceral thing in my body. I was like, that's the secret to the world. Mm-hmm. I think moment. that was, like, really cool about her because there was – at that time, I feel like that was, like, the time of, like, girls being, like, so skinny. Like, yeah. so sick and skinny. Um, and she wasn't. And she was, like, the most – famous of them all and I yeah. do feel like that was like a good example probably for like a lot of us for sure because I remember like even like the Olsen twins I was obsessed with them too um they were of tiny course, tiny but they were tiny and then I think I don't know the age difference but I think Hillary Duff and Lizzie McGuire in that kind of like era was around the same time that they might have been coming out of like their twin movies and they mm-hmm. were just doing like you just saw paparazzi photos of them yes. looking like stick figures mm-hmm. and that also was like oh okay I have to be skinny sideways to be this, but if I want to be that, then I have to be, I have to be a skeleton who smokes cigarettes mm-hmm. <laughs> in New York City. Okay, interesting. I, I don't know if that's my vibe. <laughs> it, I honestly like that. I do feel like growing up in that time, it was like unhealthy. I mean, I do. Don't you think that it's a little bit more, um, like all accepting now? I think we're getting there. Yeah, it may be worse too because it's like in your face with social media. Like we were. I was doing dial up to get on there, so it was like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, that work ethic coming yes, hot. I know. <laughs> yeah. Like sit there for like, I mean, I, because I grew up in the country, we didn't even have self service, so like the dial up was probably like a 13, 14 minute wait just to like load a page. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Worth it. <laughs> but yes, I agree. I think we're in a, a better place now, ish. Um, I think we're getting there. I think we're like learning the tools better, mm-hmm. which is good, and we're calling out. You know, like well, the Jessica Simpson thing when she was a size four and the whole world was like, what happened? She swallowed her sister. Like, whatever it was. Like, the dumb, yeah, like, like size bad four. jokes. Yeah. She's a size four. Like, eat my shorts. It's so mm-hmm. insane. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So we – what happened between brother gets famous and then Mackenzie's going to move to L.A.? So I okay. um, was – acting a ton so i signed with um i i got this like acting coach in my hometown who okay she like put an ad in the paper and it say, said like audition style classes but 18 and up and at the time i was like 13 or 14 and i called her and i was like hey like i want to take your class and she's like oh you have to be 18 and i was like i still want to take your class <laughs> and you're like no, no 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 but my brother what's his name kaylin <laughs> Kaylin is my brother. I don't think yeah. you understand. I'm special. Yeah. I was like, I, I got something. Yeah. Anyway, she um, decided that she would teach me like privately. So I couldn't be in the class, but okay. she would do like private coachings. And so I studied with her for like probably two or three years. And um, she had this agent in Vancouver that she would send my like tapes to. Like mm-hmm. I'm talking we would mail VHS tapes like I feel like I'm like sounding old but it wasn't that that long ago um no I think it yeah I think it was a this is like probably like 15 years ago it's so crazy yeah time is wild yeah so we would send them these VHS tapes and um eventually he's like I think she should fly out to Vancouver um because that's kind of like the hub of acting in Canada right uh and I want to meet her so we flew out I think at that time I was 14 
and I played the violin for him. I, he didn't even yeah, get me yeah. to act. I was like, do you want to see me play the violin? And he's like, sure. <laughs> so I sat in his office and played what? the violin like a little classical piece. And he signed me on the spot. And I'm with him still. Like, I literally talked to him yesterday. So um, I'm obsessed with this story. Yes, I lived with him. Um, he's like my, hold well, on. I would say he's like, you live, why did you I, live with him? He, in his basement suite. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. I was like, oh no, what? No, no, no. He's like 60. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's like my, so he I would say he's like my like dad, but like not the good version. Like he's the one that, who would be like feeding me drinks under the table and like, you should try smoking weed and like all this kind of stuff. Where sure, 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 sure. Yeah. He's, he's the like, uncle. He's, he's like the, the uncle. uncle. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, yep um, yep. but we've had so many like amazing times together and like he's been here like he's came come to see um our place here and yeah he's been my agent for since i was 14 and i have uh, managers in la and stuff now but he is my canadian agent um so yeah i started auditioning and then i booked this really cool show um, that was like half acted half animated with dinosaurs yes i saw this and i i yes i need to know more (laughs) it it was called dino sapien Uh uh-huh and it is i wish it would just slowly disappear but it it won't it won't we all have our things i have so many like i have so many things that i'm like oh my god go away um but at the time i don't know 16 years old first series it was pretty cool the cool are you at show with dinosaurs yeah are you kidding i would have sh- i would have sh- killed someone we literally would act with like there was like this stick with like a, a ball on the top of it and it mm-hmm. would be like a green screen ball and like that would be like the dinosaurs the dinosaur's name was um eno or something like that I can't sure it was that, something like that <laughs> And it was like a friendly dinosaur. It's like dino, but yeah. different emphasis on the eye. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think it was something I can't remember. That um, great. But that would be like our eye line for like where the dinosaur would be. So there'd be some right. like grumpy like grip or something that was like holding this thing. And we'd be like, oh, you know, and he would just be like standing there with like this pogo stick. Eating his peanuts. Like yeah. when is lunch? Yes. Incredible. Yeah. So we did that for like a year. Um and that was my first one and then yeah just kind of like kept acting continually and then there was like a gap um I think I was like probably 18 or 19 where I don't know if I was like went through like a more like insecure phase or like or really what happened but I just couldn't book a part for like a full year Mm. um and I was pretty like banging them out before that and um that's when I decided I was gonna go to like recording school and I learned how to record on pro tools and cut tape and all that kind of stuff and then that's when I started writing songs and that's how the music kind of like started. I would send those songs. They were so bad. Like there was one, there was one song sing that it. I decided to sing in a British accent that because I was like, I thought that would be like creative. No, so, who, ins- someone inspired it though. I don't know. No. Like, okay. It was like kind of Lady Gaga-ish. Like it wasn't country. It was Lady Gaga-ish, but like okay. British. It was called something about like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Like something about unicorns dancing on the rooftop it was so bad like my family like always sings it now because it's just so bad yeah it's yeah it's your burner song it's incredible so started writing just turd songs for a long time and then (laughs) got a couple like still turds but acceptable yeah and slightly less stinky turds yes as they do and sent them to like a sony actually publisher and they ended up signing me so for a publishing well they couldn't have been that stinky <laughs> they were stinky <laughs> <laughs> they were so bad well, someone thought they were palatable someone so. needed to get fired <laughs> <laughs> someone had a cold yeah. couldn't smell um yeah that's okay so were you still in la when that was happening so i was all in vancouver when that was happening oh my god okay so yes. then so then when did we go to la so then um uh well I guess I was like probably 22 or something like that but it's hard because I didn't have paperwork so I didn't have I couldn't just like come down and um audition or anything because I wouldn't get cast because I didn't have could you get no one or no so you could but like you needed work to like show that yeah to get no one yeah so um once I signed my publishing deal um because Sony is obviously a universal company I signed like the Canadian division but they have a company in nashville and new york and la and everything their head office signed like a letter for me like she's going to be writing songs for us and so that got me my own one and so then i could go to la and audition um for american shows and american parts and stuff like that yeah yeah yeah. so yeah that's how it all happened did you ever think about doing and forgive me if you did like singing competition shows so i didn't because a like at the time I still struggle with this I get so nervous 
on like, stage mm-hmm. oh my god this like is, i please tell me more yeah i don't know what like so i have like I always have had like a very sensitive stomach. Even this morning, I was going to text you guys, be like, "Hey, my stomach's not feeling good today." Because it, not like I was still going to show up, but I'm like, I might have to go to the bathroom. Like, I don't yes. know. I just have a very sensitive stomach, so when I get nervous, it like amps up. Shits for days. I'm the exact yes. same way. Yes, I, I could. I I could not have pooped. I could have pooped all morning, <laughs> and then I'm totally fine. Not eat a single thing, and it's like I swallowed six burritos the minute I get nervous, and they all have to leave my body at the same time. Same. It's and I don't know what is going on. I, but this, I, what I, is have this you mean? heard of like the thing that's like if you're like cute, most cute girls have like IBS. Have oh, I that? must be the sexiest fucking <laughs> motherfucker on the planet. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Like it's like our secret little like I don't know secret it's our it's our single flaw yes <laughs> our only everybody flaw. gets one and that's our only one <laughs> yes so for me like a singing competition like the nerves would have just like taken over like okay. i just wouldn't have been able to do it i don't think and and then if i'm nervous i don't sing as well and at sure. the time i was just that was was more like crippling for me the the nerve part and i think it just like stemmed from like i really wanted it and i really wanted to do a good job and like i was a very like um you know, if I didn't do a good job, it would like wreck my whole entire week and I would like put a lot of shame on myself. So that just kind of, sure. you know, so, um, you also had all of these like data points of one, you had like inside scoop from your brother, what it was actually like, which I'm sure was he nervous? To, um, he's just like a better technical singer than I am. So he didn't. And I think because he had like never believed and no, none of us did, um, that he would even make it through the first round. Um, so, so I funny. think he, when you don't like, when you have less to lose, mm-hmm. you just like don't care as much. So God. yeah. If you could bottle that up and swallow it every single time that like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I know. You can never like. You can't fake it. Fake that. I know. And it's so annoying. It's 2023. We have AI. Put that shit in a syringe and <laughs> give it to me so I can I inject know. it for important things. I know. Um, but yes, yeah, so you had your brother who had this kind of inside scoop about what it was actually like. And I would imagine if work ethic is so important to you, that show is kind of not really about, like, I'm sure you can work really, really hard, but Mm -hmm. it's about like the press and it's a lot of luck and it's a lot of like people's perception of you. And I would imagine it probably felt like something you couldn't control either. Yeah. And you've seen it because you go in your brothers, you're like, he'll never win. He does win. You're like, I don't know anything about anything. Mm -hmm. Like that would just... Yeah. It feels like the right path because you've seen someone who had success with it. But then there's also that pressure of like, if you don't have that success, then you're right. There's a the comparison. There's totally. all that stress. There's just so many factors. Totally. And I did, I did know like you sign, like I said, crazy contracts after sure, like no control. Mm-hmm. So I think he was also like, never do it. Never do it. You okay. know, although like, uh, I mean, he, he would not be the person he is today without that. And like without that experience, but there was a lot of like hard stuff that came with it. So I think he was like, do it a different way. Do it. If you want to do it, like do it a different way. Yeah. So that's kind of, that was the path that I took. And, um, yeah, I think it was like, definitely like you don't have that instant like success of like a TV show. Um, and like that, those followers or those fans, I guess right away, but it definitely is probably a nicer approach, I think. Yeah, it, it, like those show that reality TV, there's this like instant clout that comes with it mm-hmm. just to bundle it all together, yep. whatever that may be. But that that clout you get so quickly. And I just feel like as humans, we don't adapt to that very well anyways. No, I it's think like so strange. as much as like I wish sometimes that like things would go faster in my career, I do think that like I have built the tools along the way because it's been slow to properly handle everything and like you know, you know, your my personality, I don't think has changed at all where sometimes it can when it's like that fast and it's not mm-hmm. anybody's fault. It's just like nobody is ready for like that amount of fame and that amount of money and that amount of, um, you know, traveling and all that stuff, like that amount of yeses always. Yes. Um, you're just not. So if you have like a slower climb, I think you adjust slower and then you can act more appropriately I think yeah we're not hardwired to have fame overnight so yeah. like inevitably using the same metaphor we're gonna short circuit yeah not we it hasn't happened to me the, the <laughs> to, to those whom it has happened to yeah you short circuit because it's again we're it's not unnatural it. it's so unnatural yeah yeah um okay so then we're what brought us to Nashville then so um was living in LA 
and um, had signed that publishing deal. Mm-hmm. And I knew I wanted to do like country music at that time. I had got the Lady Gaga British accent s- <laughs> songs out of my system. Which you were going to send to me because I need to hear it. Yes. I, <laughs> I honestly, I know there's like a laptop with like Garage Band or something on it with like just... I hope it's burnt somewhere and like never surfaces, but I'm sure it'll surface at some point. I'm going to subpoena <laughs> you <laughs> for it. I need it. <laughs> so bad. Um, so I knew I wanted to like come to Nashville and do country music, but why just um, at the time I was already like releasing stuff up in Canada. Okay. So I was already like building that career. Was it country or was it? It was country. Yeah. So, so why country? Was that um, I think just did? because I grew up like on a, a ranch and like on the middle of nowhere. I love country music and, um, was obviously like a huge fan of like at the time like Casey Musgraves and Taylor Swift and um Miranda Lambert like I love that kind of music and I just grew up in the country so that was what my parents listened to like my dad is like a rancher like he literally does gotcha. livestock cattle and bison for a living so that was our whole um growing up was country music so, so but my I guess my question is you were doing the Lady Gaga British thing yeah there was like a chase of pop a little bit mm-hmm. And then was the switch to country, was it a, I've found myself and I know what I want to do? Or was it, this is what I should be doing. This is what feels better. Like, what was the I think switch? it was like, um, this felt the most natural. Okay. And the most like, I'm just not like a um, super, like, not that you need to be in pop music, but I'm not like a super flamboyant person, like where it's a little bit more like showy and like... Um, I would be feel more comfortable on a guitar and just like singing a lyrical yes. heavy song instead Cause, of because at that point it was Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, yes. these big like showboaty yeah. females. Okay, and I wasn't I, that was never going to be my personality. So it felt okay. more what I like gravitated towards and what I was more writing towards and writing better and um, I guess just enjoy more. Like I was just liking that style of music at that point. Yeah. Um. So yeah, moved to LA booked um a series called Helen Wheels which I went and filmed for like three years and then at that point I was kind of like making trips to Nashville um I met Jake and yeah that's where Jake comes in and um writing for you know my record I put out like a little like independent record kind of thing of of country songs and um then one of those songs well a few of those songs did pretty well but one specifically and that's how I met some people that I'm now signed with today was because of that little independent record. And so amazing was kind of like coming back and forth to Nashville and decided to like fully move here. I don't know why, I guess like probably Jake had something to do with it. And I had met these people that I was hoping to sign a record deal with. And LA was really expensive and Nashville seemed more of the fit for what I wanted to do and where I wanted to live. Yeah. Did you feel a pull because there's a boy involved. I feel like the mm-hmm. amount of women who have moved to Nashville for a boy, myself included. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels right, though. <laughs> if I'm like, the, this is a Hallmark movie. Like, we're just all being fed. I know. Um, but it makes sense because you were doing country music. I also feel like, I'll speak for myself, I like Nashville because it's, I grew up in West Virginia. And L.A., I loved how exciting it was, but it got a little overwhelming. And then yeah. I feel like Nashville is a good combo of kind of like my, you know, redneck backwoods roots Same. I shouldn't say backwoods is like a city but my redneck roots and then with like a little more life to it you know yeah Some and nice it still has like the grind and stuff here which yes. still has like all the industry yep, yep 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 but a little bit more like the lifestyle is like a bit chiller yep it's still Even. a city of dreamers but it's a t- it's um accessible yes yes it's not over as, uh, as overwhelming yeah so I think I feel the exact same way as you like it's just LA is so hustle and bustle and like who do you know and what are you wearing and all this kind of stuff and that's just not my personality really sure 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 sure. okay so we're in Nashville Mm -hmm. and then we're signed and then we're fucking living the dream so (laughs) I guess I'll just bop around to a few random questions that I had so you have I'm trying to think if there's like any sort of like chronological order fuck it so (laughs) you have a song with Dustin Lynch Mm -hmm. who seems like a gem he's awesome he's such a nice guy what a sweetheart never met him looks sweet um that cowboy hat just people he, in cowboy hats I know. they just look nice he i will say that like i mean i've met a lot of industry people and some are okay and some are awesome and some are not and mm-hmm. he is awesome like Aww. genuinely a good person yeah shout out um so i am not in music and i'm a fucking idiot so <laughs> when you 
when a, when two artists work together on a song, do a collab or whatever, is it what's the verbiage? Are you technically, um, are yeah, you technically you're featured on. I'm what featured. Is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How does that happen? So okay, this is kind of like a crazy story. So I this was 2020. Okay. So I was putting up my first single. Um, I put it like didn't put it I signed with the record deal like in 2016 then I went and filmed another different tv series for three years so didn't put out any music the end of 2019 once that show got canceled I came back and started like writing songs and putting out music then at the top of 2020 one of those songs was kind of like reacting um it was called these days and so the label's like we're gonna take these days to U.S. radio so I started on a tour with like Chris Lane and um was doing a radio tour it's kind of like in country you got to go around and like go to all the radio stations and promote the song and all that kind of stuff. So I did three months of that and then COVID hit. And then (sighs) they were like, Hey, nobody knows who you are. Like you have to do this radio tour, but nobody's seeing people right now. So we got to pull the song because you just like, we can't properly promote it and put a bunch of money behind it when you like, can't go out and, you know, do the thing, do the thing that everybody does. So they were shitting bricks. Like, how did you feel? I was so bummed because it was like, I felt like I had been working a long time for that and you just never know when the next like at that point I thought that song was a hit so I'm like when's when am I gonna write the next hit like I don't know that song felt like it was reacting so I was just like super bummed about that and I remember like um I went I we were like fostering a dog at the time I don't know why I remember this but I brought the labels like hey we need to talk to you and I was like all excited like thinking it was gonna be like a good thing I brought the dog in this little dog and they told me and like I'm not like a crier but I just started crying like to the point where like I couldn't talk like not a cute cry like loud (laughs) and this dog this foster dog was like crawling all over me and I'm like I brought this in because I was like excited I wanted to meet this dog and I have the worst news and like this dog is anyway so I was so bummed oh yeah um and also just like what am I gonna do now like the world was stopped and I was really stressed so so much out of your control so much out of my control which I don't like of course yeah it's your worst nightmare yeah so um anyways probably like two or three months later my manager called me and was like hey Dustin Lynch is basically auditioning a bunch of girls in town to feature on this song is that normal no not normal so uh, normally you would just like ask whoever you wanted basically but he wanted to do it this way and I thought it was kind of cool like how he was doing it so I put a vocal down with my producer and he got like now that I know his side of the story he got like a folder of like singer a singer b all down to I don't know how many there were probably like 30 or 40 and um no names on it so then he listened yeah. through and him and his team and they all picked a singer that they liked mm-hmm. and um that was me that they all picked so oh my gosh yeah. so then he um okay wait but hearing you didn't know this at the time you didn't know that like they didn't know your name or mm-hmm. anything so when you heard this story you were like and it's like purely based on the work that I put in and the talent that I have and not anything not how hot I am or like anything like totally. that totally I loved that part because it's like so much of this industry is like political yeah. so it's like who's her manager who's her label how many followers does she have like yep. all of that plays into everything music and acting you know you might yeah. not get a part because you have less followers than the other person which is so crazy totally so I did love how he did that and I thought it was really smart and cool very cool yeah and so then he um before I knew that I got it he like followed me on Instagram and um I was like oh, okay I see that what does this mean yeah what so does I this like mean? screenshotted it and I sent it to my label I'm like he followed me like why would he follow me if he wasn't like <laughs> oh my god this is like yeah. when a boy likes your story or what I, it's, I know. It's like all of the emotions like what does this mean I know what you sent to all your friends and the label's like it doesn't mean anything like we haven't oh, heard any they're like we haven't heard anything so it doesn't mean anything and i'm like okay so then um they're protecting your heart whatever fine yeah and then like maybe a couple of weeks later he called me and i didn't answer because i didn't have the number saved and then he left me a voicemail which i still have and um just said like i would love for you to be on the song i think it could be really special and um yeah i'm excited to like work with you kind of thing yeah so that's how it all happened and then i had still never met him the first day i met him um was they wanted me to like go back in the studio and like recut a couple things and so uh, him and his producer which is a huge producer in town my producer which is a huge producer in town all of us were in the studio and they're like okay pop in there and just start singing and I was like okay I'm scared yeah. um and it was cute like Dustin showed up like wearing my merch and I was like oh did my team send you that like that's cute he's like no I went on your website and I bought it 
And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. So he showed up I and like broke. I'm obsessed with him. Yeah, this like such so like a nice sweet. icebreaker to be like, you know, rocking my t-shirt while he came in. So it was really, really sweet. This is like such a lesson in being, because you guys are collaborating on something, but he chose you. He's the artist or the feature. So like such an, a lesson in being like a boss or whatever that may be that's that status thing to be like, hey, I am love you just mm-hmm. as much as you could potentially love me or whatever yeah. the idea of me it's and such and a also like thing. just if you just look at it like he had had 10 number ones and I was like a nobody mm. so like he never ever made me feel that way like even to this day he would be like um you know when we did we did Jimmy Kimmel together and he's like yeah she can stand up closer to the camera and I'm like but you're the famous one like I feel like you should be doing like he was always just like very giving and like yeah. there was no ego and like you know he was the main singer and the the famous person and I was you know the feature he never ever made it like that which was really cool oh I'm in love with him yeah okay I think he's single maybe you could he's single yeah he's single Mackenzie what are we doing here <laughs> hook it up I was like oh my girlfriends I'm like I think he's single oh my god hook it yeah. up let's go yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm avail um Okay, so then my second question with that, because that's that was song was huge, huge. It I was re- like it still holds records for like, um, I mean one of the longest streaming number ones and the most um, played number one in like ten years. Like it was crazy. It's so catchy. I was actually like hooking stuff up and I was singing a song. And you know that point where you're like singing a song, you don't know what you're singing, and then it hits you. That I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't be singing this when Mackenzie walks in because that's kind of creepy. To, like, be no, singing I would have loved song. it. I would have loved it. But it was just subconsciously just because I listened to a lot of your songs this morning getting ready and that for whatever reason, that was the one that I was just like. Boop, 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 boop. I will say that like there's something about it that um, like we would say like it doesn't have like a burn rate, which like I feel like people could listen to it a lot. Like normally when you listen to a song, like eventually you're kind of like, oh, I'm kind of tired of it or like fatigued of it. Yeah. And there is something about that song. I didn't write it so I can say it because I'm also a fan of the song. Um, but it, it doesn't have a burn rate to me. Like it's like you yeah. can listen a lot. Yeah. That's a great, that, is that like an industry term? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> oh my God, write that one down. Yeah. We're going to use that for next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the next podcast, I'm like, so what's the burn, burn rate? rate? <laughs> Probably people like, would be like, what? That's what my team says. So I don't know if it's like an industry word or not. But. Well, we're going to make it. We're going to yeah. make fetch happen um, right here on this podcast. Okay. And then my second question with that is, so you, this is so layered too. And this could be really obvious, but, you know, when you're acting, the, you're the face of something, but like as an ensemble. Mm-hmm. And then when you're an artist, you're the face of something and you have producers and you have writers and you have all that stuff, but you're the face of it kind of mm-hmm. by yourself. But when you have a song that you're like, you're a feature on his song, but it sounds like you guys kind of did the whole thing together yeah. and it was so successful. So you got to kind of promote it and do all that stuff together. How does that differ do you prefer that? Do you prefer being not the only face? I think that like for a first time of like things like um, like late night TV or like we did the morning show or like um, just like all of these things I had never done before. I think it was really nice for me to have like somebody there who had done it. And so okay, I wasn't yeah. like so um, naive about it going in. I'd be like, like, I don't know. You just don't know. Like how, how does... A late night show work do you get to do it once do you get to do it twice like do they comp it after like all those questions that you have yeah I would have been a lot more nervous I think if I didn't have somebody to ask who had done it before so I feel like that yeah. was like a really nice step for me and honestly like the biggest thing was because it was still COVID I couldn't do my own stuff because they wouldn't my label wouldn't put it out because I couldn't tour it so Dustin had already had a name so we didn't do the radio tour because radio already knew him Mm -hmm. and so I got to kind of like skip that part a little bit having his name um attached with me because he already had that clout with him yeah yeah, yeah, so it was just like a good timing like something that we could keep moving in COVID so I wasn't completely stalled yeah and he sounds like a good person to have along with you learning those things too because I imagine like the wrong person to do that with could be miserable could be miserable could just you could feel you could feel like such a more newbie rookie than you actually even are in the situations yeah like there was it could have been a situation where I would have felt like a lot less than yeah um where he kind of like he would let me take the reins like what do you um 
you know, even the interviews, like he would like let me answer first and like um I would always like look to him like you want to answer because it's like your song and he'd be like no you take it I'm like okay cool like I don't know he was just always like very gracious so yeah um I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anybody else and I really don't think there would be a lot of people that would have acted the way he did towards me so it was cool which is a shame but also so invigorating that there are people that exist that yeah that do that yep. um peek behind the curtain while we're on the subject of that I and we can totally cut this if you're like, this is so embarrassing and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but I was Googling you, obviously, as you do. And I saw this beautiful photo oh God. of you in a blue dress. And underneath was like all these other photos of you in a blue dress. And I looked closer and I was like, that's Kelsey Ballerini in the same dress. Oh, uh, <laughs> I know. I Kay. need to. Okay, because I, here's what I don't think people understand. So you and Kelsey Ballerini wore the same or similar? The same. The same dress mm-hmm. to the CMAs? So what it yeah. was. Mm-hmm. And I think people think that there's like this inhumanness to these award shows and that like nothing like this could happen. Like everyone must talk and there must be such like a thing. It is like a structured thing, mm-hmm. but it's also just like human beings existing autonomously. So just tell me how you felt about it. Well, so how it all happened was um, when you do like carpets like that, like the new people like me go a lot earlier Mm -hmm. um and then like the celebrities come right before the show sure so i had done the carpet um obviously no idea like i had my stylist pulled that dress it was um it was a balenciaga dress which also then we got a bunch of backlash for that because this was before the scandal though Sure, 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 Um, sure, sure but uh yeah so she had pulled the dress and i loved it and i thought it was like super cool and you looked gorgeous by the way thank you i was obsessed thank you it was a really cool dress yeah and i walked the carpet literally we left i was we were eating we were like at jeff ruby's like eating steak and i was in this dress like i had like napkins all over it just to make sure i didn't spill on it of course and um my manager's phone starts like blowing up this like maybe three hours later after i've already done the carpet and he's like oh my god and i was like what and he was like oh my god and i was like why you're freaking me out and he's like showing me the picture of kelsey in the dress and i was like Oh shit! What was your and what was your gut reaction? That I moment? just thought like she was gonna be pissed at me, like because she was like, "Girl, I would have thought I'd been like, oh my god, she's gonna be so mad at me." Yeah, yeah, because I was like a very small artist compared to her at the show, and like wearing the same thing. Like I just didn't want to like make anybody upset, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" But I didn't have any other outfit because we were at dinner and I had to go back to the show right away. Like we were, I think we were nominated. I can't remember, so I had to get back to like sit. Of um, well, also, people don't just, like, bring second outfits to these kinds of things normally, unless yeah. you're, like, Beyonce, I guess. Or, like, I didn't have, like, even if I could have gone home, like, I didn't have something that fancy. No, of course um, not. So, anyways, I messaged her on Instagram, and I was like, we're wearing the same dress, and, like, you look amazing. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. And, like, you're beautiful. I'll see you in a little bit. And when I got there, she was wearing the dress still. She would already in the car, but she must have then somebody must have told her and then she was maybe hosting or something so she had like multiple outfits okay so gotcha. she went and changed right away and then okay. um the next day she messaged me back because she was probably like so busy and she's like oh my god don't worry about it like you looked stunning like and then she did like a tiktok and you know did, oh, she, the, did. The, she was like just nobody do the like who wore it better of course they did it was like in people magazine like who wore it better and you know oh, the but internet. it's just like if Okay, if you look at the carpet, like every single guy is wearing the same suit. Like oh, they're all, they all look the exact same. Yeah, yeah. but the girl does it, and it's like a, such a big scandal. Of course, because it's I mean the internet always like looking for. I mean, since the beginning of time, it's like how can we pit women against each other? Mm-hmm. Which is like again tales all the time. Yeah, my parents were like, I, they're like, what if your thing was like every show you wore like the same dress as somebody else and like that's what you like got famous for like because every my whole team's like we need a scandal like that's i need a scandal i'm like but i'm not like a scandal person i'm like married i'm like i can't have like a really bad scandal so i'm like what if it is i just show up in the same dress and it's like every show and i'm 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 kind of into it (laughs) it's like it's very um just like under the radar <laughs> like and you don't even just like you're like oh my god again Who it's like the fifth time. <laughs> yeah i don't even know how we would do it, but it would be pretty funny i would be i would love it and i would help you somehow pull it off in some capacity <laughs> yeah. um it's very like ingrid goes west like yeah. When they, yeah yeah i'm obsessed but i think yeah when i because i didn't know about this and then i mm-hmm. was looking at it and there was like you know a couple stories about it because it i 
it's happened so many times i'm sure yeah but i'm sure it was because like you're both country artists you're both blonde you're both beautiful and it was a specific dress too like it was a very specific dress yeah, yeah. it's gorgeous but yeah. And then, of so course, like the whole Valenciaga scandal happened like a week later. And then we got like another round of flack. I'm like, we obviously didn't know that. No, like, of course you not. Know. So it was, a, I was like, this dress is just giving me a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> giving me a run for your yeah. money. Um, yeah, because I, I think too, I haven't, I've never been to an award show at that capacity. But any of those like showy events or whatever, I had, there feels like there's this air of, uh, to some people like this is like an event for the one percent mm-hmm. so like we have to be like a little bit like it can be a little two-dimensional mm-hmm. and i just feel like if that would have occurred i would have been like oh no i'm i'm fucking the system i'm fucking with the system of we all wear different things and everything's perfect and runs smoothly like that's where, where i would have felt yeah. i don't know i did feel that like this was my first like big u.s award show so i was like of course, I'm going <laughs> to wear the same freaking dress my first time. Make an impression. But baby. we were like, my team was like, this is awesome. I got yeah. so much press, yeah. like way more than I would have got. So they're like, this is, I mean, we were on like every late night show, like talking, not not like um, like the entertainment shows, mm-hmm. um, talking about it. They're like, you got way more press than you would have got. Like, this is great. Yes. And I was like, yeah, kind of embarrassing. But I mean, also, it's like not like who cares? It's also, a freaking dress. who cares? Of course. Yeah. Yes. I feel just... I, in the moment, I'm sure you're like, oh, shit. And mm-hmm. then afterwards, you're like, we're two humans who were. It's fine. Yeah. Um. But hey, get that press, baby. I know. However I, you can get it. I know. I love it. I do. It's That's my that's my scandal. I'm just going to start showing up in the same outfits. <laughs> I support this so much. Mackenzie. It would be really, really funny. Like, super funny. I'm for like, a bit. And then it would be. <laughs> And people would get and then annoyed. people be, people might too. I don't know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where the line is, um, but we'll cross it first. Okay. And I'm always curious when I talk to an artist, what is your... Because, again, I don't really know anything about the music industry. Mm-hmm. What is, like, your songwriting process? Like, do you come up with an idea? Is it a melody? Is it – I'm always curious. This is – this is you. I know this question has been answered a million times on no, music-centered things, yeah. but I'm always so curious. I think for me, it's, like – I mean, it can be, like, so many different things that, like, inspire. Um, like, from – so, so like in Nashville they always write from like a hook or like a tag if you will like so um if my song like I have a song called pick up like and we came up with the hook like who's that pick up picking up now and so you have that right. and then you write to that basically mm-hmm. whereas like in LA you might write to like a melody more but here it's like all hook lyric driven okay. um so I would always try to like come in with hooks and sometimes I mean like I wrote yesterday and like just didn't have time because I've been on the road to like really think of things so the other songwriter came in with like a bunch of hooks um which was awesome because I didn't have any (laughs) um but it'll come from like I'll be watching a show or I'll be talking to a friend or I'll have gone something or like my sister will be like this thing happened to me and I'll be like writing it down quickly Mm -hmm. I'm like can I use that um so it's just something that I've like lived or experienced and um then I'll try to turn it into you know I feel like if I've gone through it or my sister or my best friend or whatever then probably a lot of people have Mm -hmm. um and then if you can find that little like lyric twist on it it's like perfect for like country Nashville scene so I would always start from there like some sort of hook what do you feel like is your thing when you're doing a song is it the lyrics is it the melody is it adding like a fun vocal thing to it like what do you think your like strength is kind of your strength like the, the your biggest strength I would say like normally what I think people have said to me is a lot is like coming in with like a ton of ideas okay I'm like I'm usually an idea person sometimes that gets like dry if you're just like I mean there was a point where I was writing two songs a day for like six months and then writing on the weekend so it's like That's at insane. that point it's like you eventually just run out of ideas yeah, you're um, singing about unicorns eventually. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. In British accents. Yes. Um, so I think like that is like a strength of mine is like normally I have a lot of ideas mm-hmm. um, lyrically. So and melody, like I feel like I'm strong in melody. But um, yeah, I, I do love thinking of like a cool little like play with words. That's what I love about country. It's mm-hmm. like so smart with its vernacular. <laughs> yeah. And it and that's like really important. So it's like, yeah. I mean, you can definitely have a song that is doesn't have that twist and it's more emotional and it's honest and um that's also could be like a massive song but a lot of them have some sort of lyrical something happening yeah it's i don't think i 
I don't think I realized it. I feel like people have like a song they listen to country music where they realize that that's kind of a trend in country music. And I remember there was a song called Homeboy, like Homeboy or something. Mm -hmm. And it was like Homeboy with your pants on the ground or something. I don't remember. (laughs) And then at the end of the song, it was like, come on, Homeboy. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. And then I couldn't unhear it in every single country song I listened to. And I was like, it's so cool. I love a play on words. And I think that it feels so smart in a genre of music that kind of prides itself on being simple. Mm-hmm. So it's very cool, like, I don't know, just juxtaposition there. Of, yeah, I of, think, like, a lot of, like, uh, like L.A. writers love to come here and, like, focus on lyric because it's so lyric. Like, that's mm-hmm. in town, like, the lyric is more important than the melody, whereas L.A., the melody is much more important than the lyric. Sure. Um, now, if you can, like, hit both, then Ooh, very Jack special. Pooped. Yeah, mm-hmm. but... Um, I do just love like I don't know like don't you just love when you hit like the hook of a song and it does that twist and you're like oh, yes they did it yes they did it and it's satisfying yes you get those like those like goosebumps or whatever yeah. it is and you're like oh you know what's it's funny it's so like good. nobody ever says goosebumps I say goosebumps but everyone here says chill everyone bumps. says chill bumps I literally almost said chill bumps and I was like stick to your roots <laughs> what so you say goosebumps where are you from again <laughs> West Virginia okay so I yeah I grew up saying goosebumps too and I've never fact checked it like do do geese have bumps? I don't actually They must. Know. They must. I listen, I wouldn't I would not be surprised if people in, in you know, more rural areas just <laughs> fucking made something up and they're like, "Yeah." I was like, "Chill bumps to me like, I don't know, it's like I don't like it. It sounds like ooh, gross." It sounds but like then, a, like a virus or yes, something. It's like, like goosebumps bumps. also sounds pretty gross yeah, like it does. What do you say? <laughs> I think it's cuz we're used to it though, too. Yeah. I don't know. Um, oh my gosh, look at us bonding. <laughs> um, okay, and then I wanted to ask, and I talked to um, Cassidy Pope when we had her on because her, uh, she's obviously an artist. Yeah. And her, she's a friend of mine. I love her. Love she's her. So she's so great. Um, she is obviously dating someone who's also an artist. Mm-hmm. And you are married to someone who is also an artist and an actor. Like, you both have those two things. Yeah. I'm always curious. I've never been with someone who did the same thing as I did creatively mm-hmm. at the time. And I'm just so curious what that's like. It's okay. So I think there is so many positives. Yeah. There's a few negatives too, obviously. Um, like my favorite thing is like he totally gets what I'm doing. There's like no um, – like I'm gone a ton. And mm-hmm. he he loves that. <laughs> <laughs> he literally Perfect. loves it. Yeah. Um, so – but there's no like – I mean, I'm in a band. I have it. My whole band is guys. I travel just with guys. There's no like jealousy. He understands if I'm like stressed or like having problems with the label or, you know, down because I didn't get this part or whatever. Like he gets all of that. Um, he's also like such a good like sounding board for like, do you like this song or did you think that audition was good or whatever? That's, I love all of that. Um, sometimes it gets tricky. Like I don't love, like we talked, like there's no, neither of us have like consistent income so it's like either like we're crushing it or we're not making money that is a little stressful to me yeah um so it'd be like sometimes i'm like it'd be nice if one of us were like a doctor and we could just like know that somebody's making x amount a year um but we don't and that's the life we chose and i'd rather be like i love the idea of like our little creative household of like artists and like when we have kids i want them to like feel like they're in a house that like I don't know. You go into the studio and you can go write a song for how for long, or you can go just be creative. I think that's like a really beautiful thing. So if for us, it's like really worked and we thrive on like busy and long distance. We just really good at that. And I think we're both really independent people. And so it works. It works really well for us. Do you want kids? I definitely want kids. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know like when or the plan for that, but you're so busy. It's, It's hard. Yeah. But I'm kind of also like, I don't know. You just do it and you make it work and you lug them on the tour bus. Yeah. That's what I feel like I've got. I mean, I, I would prefer to have babies with a person that I am <laughs> dating, um, yeah. have considered the, the alternative, yeah. which is just like do the Shonda Rhimes thing, pop them out. Yep. Raise them with your mother. God save me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I feel like most people are like, there's never a perfect time. No, which is I get, which is true for fucking everything. Isn't Do you want it? you want kids then? I, yeah, eventually. Yeah. yeah, I would. I love. I would love like a bunch of little rugrats running around. Yeah. Um. I think. Yeah, I think there isn't, and like I think people like I think now more than ever, um. You see so many like badass women like 
on stage pregnant and like killing it and beautiful and i think it's like it always should have been like accepted but i feel like now it's even more um accepted where it's like cool it's cool and you're not like done once you have kids like you're you know what i mean like there's like that stigma of it i mean of course i still have those fears like yeah you know of the oh would i get dropped if i had a kid or whatever like i don't know like the guys definitely know but i don't know um but i don't want to like choose to make decisions in my life because i'm like scared of losing a job you yeah, know? of course not. So, well, I feel like our generation, I feel like things are changing and our generation is kind of in this transition period of there are still people who think certain ways and self- mm-hmm. and people who have transitioned with us or have progressed and you you're kind of scared that like the people who haven't quite gotten there are going to be making decisions yeah. and you're like I don't know, it could be could go either way. Yeah. But yeah, I remember I saw Greta Gerwig was pregnant when she made Barbie and I was like mm-hmm. They can do anything. <laughs> yeah, even like um, Gal Gadot or whatever, like filming Superwoman, yeah, pregnant, like throwing up between scenes, like insane. That also is like how incredible is that? That like yes. women can do that and like push through that, and like that is like Superwoman. Uh, it's absurd and it lights me on fire. Yeah, and it's I think so cool. like I mean, yeah, I just feel like there's no limitations. Like I'm not gonna let like somebody tell me what I'm capable of doing because I have a kid. I'm just not, you know? Fuck no. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so you have your first headlining tour coming up. Yes. Are you so excited? Are you so nervous? How do we feel? I'm like, so we haven't even announced it yet. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but it's fine. It's, everyone knows it's happening. I just okay. we haven't like sent dates out or anything. Okay. Actually, yesterday we just were like picking rooms, like room sizes. Um, I'm nervous but, like because I don't know. I've never done it before. Like I just want it to sell out. <laughs> Of course. You know, like I just yeah. wanted to like do well. Um, and so I don't know. Like you I play festivals all the time and I see like fans and um people singing the songs, but like will those people specifically come to my show? Like I hope so. So it's just like unknown. Um, so that's a little bit scary, but it's sure. time. I mean, I've ha- we're doing t- it's in Canada, so great. Um, you know, we're going on my seventh number one or something. So it's like it's time to do it. Yeah. But um, but I am scared. Yeah, of course. Of course. Again, I won't tell people that, though. I'll just be like, no, it's going to crush. But inside, of course. But as a human. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many, like, just tangible, logistical things that you're like, I hope we hit this mark. I hope these things happen. And mm-hmm. again, out of your control. Yeah. And you just do the best you can. Yeah. And and crush people it. like like fans and stuff, like, they – they don't think about those things. They don't think about like, no. I'm all like, are we getting lighting people? Like what's lighting going to be like? Like they don't think about that. No. You know? Oh my gosh. I had no, until I like, it's a little bit more on the inside with music stuff. I had no idea how much, I didn't know people like, like there was like a director of like of tours and I had oh, no yeah. idea. Like it's the whole, it's a whole thing, but mm-hmm. you just go and you think, Oh, these people are just up on a stage singing and someone's thro- throwing a light. They, yeah. they pick <laughs> someone off the street to do the lights. It's so simple, but yeah, yeah, we, we just, if we're sober um, enough to even be coherent at the I shows, know. then we're just enjoying the music. Yeah. It's totally. the best. Yeah. I'm so I'm really, really excited. And, um, you know, I think we'll put the tickets on sale like in a couple of weeks and we'll see how it goes. Where sh- where can people go? Do you have a website? It'll be on my website. Yeah. Plug it. Yeah. It's, it's MackenziePorter.com. Hey! <laughs> it's really original. Yeah. Or like any of my Perfect. socials will link to it and you can probably get them anywhere. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. Anything else you want to chat about? Um, oh my gosh. I don't think so. I'm really like have enjoyed just chatting with you. This and was like, so fun. We, now we need to go do dinner and like actually hang and for sure. I, this wasn't hang. We're like do like a get chill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We okay. totally should do that. I would love it. I would love that too. You were wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming.